uh, determined. Uh, Dr. Oscar Louis Alves will talk about the progression of OPLL despite laminoplasty. Okay, so you thank you for, for, for the invitation. Um, <clears throat> so so the, the first thing I'm, I have to say that I, I'm, I think I'm unbiased because I practice in a country with, with a low prevalence of, uh, of OPLL. Um, there is a background on, on the surgery of OPLL. Uh, as we know, from the 60s, OPLL became more commonly diagnosed in Asia. And at those times, there were no concepts of sagittal alignment, and people were concerned with, with, with safety of procedures and laminoplasty was described to, to circumvent some of the, the unacceptable uh, approach related morbidity with the, related with the anterior approach to a point that laminoplasty is the most performed uh, surgery for OPLL uh, no doubt producing short effective decompression and, and neurological improvement however there are limitations uh, laminoplasty offers only indirect decompression as OPLL is not tackled and remains in the spinal canal and progression for uh, OPLL might, might, be, uh, might present a risk for recompression and maybe a neurological problem in the future and need for reoperation. Uh, so is there a role for motion preservation in, in the OPLL uh, progression? Uh, if you look at the incidence, you have to know the incidence of uh, OPLL. Uh, and you have two classical studies showing that you have 68.7% uh, Incidence at the two years follow-up, or another paper at ten years follow-up, uh, seventy percent. Um, these are these are series where you evaluate through the X-ray. So you wonder if there is a late slowing of uh, OPLL growth after two years, or really a lack of uh, OPLL detection by X-ray. As we said here before, OPLL is best demonstrated by by CT. Uh, if you do, if you improve your analysis by using computer-based analysis of, of X-rays, you will find out the same, more or less the same amount of uh, OPLL progression. Around 75% of patients in this series at, uh, at five years, more than five years follow-up. Uh, you can do again uh, another 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 study. Uh, from from Shiba with a higher number of patients extracted from uh, almost 1,000 patients operated, multi-center study showing again uh, OPLL progression 56.5 percent at two years, and doing a Kaplan-Meier life table analysis estimated to be a 70 71 percent at five years, and it seems really that there is a slow growth uh, of of OPLL. So. We could, in conclusion, say that uh, asymptomatic patients uh, may often be treated conservatively without a clear uh, necessity for the deco prophylactic decompression. And also, this is a good operation for, for older patients because they don't leave enough time to see uh, an important increase of, uh, of OPLL. If you do a volumetric uh, CT analysis, as they Zoom did in this paper, uh, it seems that the mean annual rate of OPLL increase is 3.35%. You need at least uh, around 22 years to double the, the lesion in size. So uh, a long time after laminoplasty for a neurological decline. You see here in this, in this uh, meta-analysis published by, by Lee uh, that, of course, uh, OPLL progression is, is follow-up dependent, as you see here. The prevalence of uh, event rate of OPLL pr progression increased with time and reached uh, around 60% about uh, uh, 10 years. But as you see, uh, the, 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 there is, this confirms once again the late slowing of OPLL growth after two years, after the operation. And uh, as you see, there is not much, much big difference when you go from more than two years to 10 years or more follow-up. Uh, what are the risk factors for, for progression of OPLL? Uh, Ori uh, identified young patients and patients with continuous or mixed type of OPLL and C3 involvement as a risk for progression of OPLL after laminoplasty. Uh, not only the, the, the incidence of, uh, of OPLL progression in, in younger patients is uh, 
it's uh, it's higher, but also it progresses more rapidly, as you see in this in this uh, very nice uh, graph here. A more rapid progression of OPLL after laminoplasty in in younger patients. So fusion surgery, such as laminectomy and fusion, might be a better option than OPLL than laminoplasty with patients that have a long life expectancy and especially if they have also a high occupying uh, ratio of OPLL. Another paper from Shiva confirming that uh, patients uh, uh, less than, than 60 years old or with mixed and continuous type of OPLL are predictive of OPLL progression. And this is basically the classification that we know and it seems that biomechanical principles are consistent with those clinical findings. The, the continuous and the mixed type of OPLL progress at a faster rate compared with segmental because there might be an increased stress and loading uh, on, on superior and inferior areas of the ossified ligament. Uh, <clears throat> there is certainly this biomechanical loading and increased uh, range of motion, but uh, there are also other opinions, uh, like on this paper from Takatsu, showing that uh, the OPLL growth was more, more occurring more rapidly in the surgical group than in conservative treatment. So that might be some sort of uh, direct stimulation, inflammatory type of uh, uh, response of ligaments by the surgical invasion. So does motion uh, itself aggravates the, the progression of OPLL? There is very, this very nice landmark paper from Matsunaga showing that uh, patients with, with a section uh, around the, the spinal cord, higher than 14, they were not myelopathic. Less than 6 millimeters, they were all myelopathic. So what happened in the patients in between? They became myelopathic if their range of motion is increased. Uh, once again, when they look at the patients with, with that progress into uh, their myelopathy, they found uh, an increased range of motion as a very uh, predictive value. So there is a compelling evidence for a correlation between increased range of motion and myelopathy progression in, in, in OPLL. Uh, does surgery itself aggravate the OPLL? Here, a paper showing that uh, with the 60, uh, num 60 patients uh, split into surgery and conservative, with almost 30 months of follow-up, the, the, the rate of uh, OPLL progression was similar in the two groups. Uh, in this paper, again, there is no association between laminoplasty and uh, pro progression of OPLL. Uh, of course, there is a small, uh, small uh, study population which can, you know, you cannot really take good, good knowledge from this paper. Uh, another paper from Matsunaga with the larger number of cases split into conservative and, and surgery. Pretty much the same incidence. There is probably a tendency for surgery to, to increase the, the, uh, the risk of OPLL progression. Again, the Takatsu paper, uh, growth of OPLL occurred more rapidly in the surgical group, but again, selection bias might happen because uh, symptomatic individuals with more aggressive OPLL, they might, they, they have more likely to, to undergo uh, surgery. Uh, a very interesting paper done at Barrow uh, in Institute in, in the, with Caucasians, actually showed that in terms of neurological outcome, laminoplasty is the worst surgery you can do, where the, the, the average change of uh, uh, Joe's score is, is, is higher. So laminoplasty in this series was the only tech technique associated with the worst uh, clinical outcome in OPLL. Uh, does resection of the OPLL decreases the rate of progression? That's a very important question. And in this paper, uh, they did an a uh, corpectomy infusion. Um, OPLL was not, not uh, uh, resected. And these were the rates of progression. Almost 57% uh, of patients had their, 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 their OPLL progressed. Here, Comparing uh, ACDF uh, with uh, laminoplasty and fusion, OPLL was resected with fusion, and you see much less uh, progression of OPLL in the ACD ACDF group compared with laminoplasty. 
and also difference in, in the clinical outcome with a five-year uh, follow-up in this uh, series. Uh, if you compare ACF, corpectomy and fusion, with uh, laminectomy and fusion, which means OPLL is resected, it doesn't seem that there is a big difference. Although uh, patients were split in both groups according to the, the canal occupants by, by the OPLL being more or less than 50%. Uh, does the addition of fusion to posterior decompression uh, decrease the rate of progression of OPLL? Uh, in this series, comparing uh, 14 uh, lamino laminectomy and fusion and 36 laminoplasty, uh, they show that the, the OPLL progression rate was higher in, in, the, in, the, in the laminoplasty and fusion. And uh, the explanation is that the range of motion in the caudal segment decreased in, in, the, in the laminoplasty group, but increased in the laminoplasty and, and, and laminectomy and fusion group. So there is, uh, according to this paper, quite the opposite. The OPLL progression was uh, significantly higher when you do fusion uh, to laminectomy. Uh, this is a paper pointing in the, in the reverse, the opposite direction, where you see that uh, if you add fusion, you have a significant number of uh, non-progression of, of uh, OPLL. So fusion is clearly associated with lowest incidence of OPLL progression and should be offered to patients with a baseline critical canal diameter. Another study, this same study, of course, small size retrospective sample. There were variations in the surgical technique of laminoplasty according to surgeons, and there was also a different uh, age distribution. Uh, another interesting paper show, with 50 patients showing that adding fusion actually uh, made the, the chance of OPLL progression smaller. And for the first time, they were able to uh, identify in some patients of the, the laminectomy and fusion group a decrease in the thickness of, uh, of uh, the, the, the OPLL, sometimes more than 0.5 millimeters. And this is one of their own cases that they are showing here. Uh, if you look at the 3D analysis method to measure the OPL, OPLL volume, again here, uh, laminectomy and fusion in 22 patients compared with 19 laminoplasty, there was a reduced rate of OPLL progression. So there is a quite interesting body of evidence that if you add fusion to decompression, to posterior decompression, you, you decrease the rate of OPLL. And uh, this study, of course, there, there was some limitations, small number of patients, once again, there, there could be some human error in, in because it's a, nevertheless a semi-automatic method of quantifying OPLL, and it was retrospective. So there was some bias design because patients were splitted in, in one operation or the other matched to the pre-op K-line, although uh, there are authors saying that pre-op K-line has no influence of, on the rate of uh, OPLL progression. Uh, finally, the, the meta-analysis by Lee, uh, in, in 2017, including 11, 11 studies with an enrolling uh, around 530 patients, all posterior approach, most of them laminoplasty, and a quarter of them uh, fusion surgery. Uh, neurological decline, there was a, sim a similar prevalence between the two, the two surgeries, no difference, although uh, it seems that, that, uh, that uh, laminoplasty, they tend to produce more uh, neurological decline than fusion. Uh, but posterior fusion actually is, is the main important factor for to get uh, good good clinical outcomes. The radiological progression of OPLL, the prevalence was 62.5 for laminoplasty and really 7.6 for fusion. Clearly, a big big difference here. It's uh, really what you see here on this on this uh, force plot uh, graph. So the indication, there is clear indication that additional fusion may decrease the, the, the risk of uh, radiographic OPLL progression. Um, again, this is a meta-analysis variability in operative techniques uh, in both uh, laminoplasty and fusion group. Very heterogeneous definition of uh, radiological OPLL progression and neurological scales for deterioration. 
uh, and also fusion group included uh, uh, anterior approach where you remove the OPLL with, and also posterior approaches. And this is the, the important question actually, what's the clinical importance of uh, progression of OPLL? Uh, here in a series of uh, 201 patients, all lamina, laminoplasty, single institution uh, retrospective study, uh, follow up for more than, than three years. Very small number of patients, 0.05%. Uh, Eight patients uh, required the second surgery, and there was a good neuro recovery in, in, in five. Um, so, very few cases of symptomatic OPLL progress uh, to the point that they require the repeat surgery. And this has been shown also by, by other authors that I, I cite here. Uh, and finally, this, this study. Again, that showing that the uh, progression of OPLL was a, not a significant predictor of, uh, of poor neurological outcome. So my conclusions are that uh, there is no doubt there is a correlation between increased range of motion and myelopathy progression in OPLL. Uh, laminoplasty is uh, associated with higher rates of OPLL progression than fusion. You can discuss also if even compared with natural history of disease of the disease uh, when you treat patients conservatively. Uh, older patients are well treated, in my opinion, with laminoplasty because there is a slow rate of growth of OPLL when this surgery is obviously indicated. If you do uh, uh, laminoplasty in more or in younger patients, you have to close uh, up. To, to, to do a close follow-up, uh, imagiological follow-up of these patients, because as I've shown, uh, OPLL progression is follow-up dependent. And uh, laminoplasty and fusion uh, is clearly associated with lowest uh, incidence of OPLL progression and should be offered to patients with, with baseline uh, critical canal. Of course, anterior approach can also be a, a useful um, approach. So in younger patients, especially those with continuous of uh, mixed type of OPLL that uh, are, in my opinion, are better treated with, with fusion due to the higher risk of postoperative uh, progression of OPLL. Uh, and uh, neurological deterioration and re-op for symptomatic OPLL progression is still uh, rare. Thank you. Good. <coughs> Very nice talk, yeah, really. Uh, but still, uh, you do not say that uh, laminoplasty should be disregarded uh, in all cases. There are some indications still. Right. I mean, that's uh, if you look at the the natural history, the incidence and the natural history of OPLL progression. If you offer this surgery to an old patient. Um, I think it's it's a suitable it's a suitable operation. It's a low risk operation. Uh, you keep a, you keep a little bit of mobility. So I, I reserve those surgeries not for young patients, as most of or some of the authors would would uh, would say, but for 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 older patients. And of course, if they are, if they are, if they are rigid, Mehmet, these older patients. You can do a laminectomy alone, and it's 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 a good operation as well. But for for young patients, I think it's a big mistake. There is clearly uh, OPLL progression, and it might have some impact in neurological recovery at long term. There is research for that as well to support what you say uh, that in younger patient uh, laminoplasty is not good option. I'll show it later. But uh, but I think uh, to keep the keep the mobility of the cervical spine is more important for a young patient. So, but uh, uh, for young patient, uh, the consideration about the pro progression of OPIL, we should do more fusion for a young patient. Is that so? Yeah. I mean, I think, for example, in 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 my hands, also if you're talking really at about young patients, and uh, as I see some of them now on the, on the 40s, with uh, uh, sometimes with uh, 
calcification behind the disc uh, that you can you might consider some sort of uh, of OPLL. And if you have a wide canal, and if you are concerned with motion preservation uh, when you do a fusion, I think lamino I think uh, arthroplasty can be a good solution for those patients. And uh, that's a technique I'm using in patients, young patients, with some ossification of, of uh, behind the disc level, uh, that they don't have a, a, a substenotic canal, they're not, they, don't, they don't have a congenital stenosis. I think arthroplasty can be a good operation if you are concerned about motion preservation. Uh, what is your comment about that surgery I have mentioned before? Uh, applying only uh, posterior fixation and doing no decompression for some OPR patients. Um, uh, Mehmet, I, I really didn't see a lot described in the literature. Um, so I, I, I think the, you could do this, but you do, should not face uh, an important uh, preoperative uh, cord compression. Uh, I think if you have a cord compression, you, you, you definitely you have to you have to um, you have to decompress. What I have to tell you, and I have some cases that we were able to show this is uh, patients that I did laminectomy and fusion, and all this uh, this ligament hypertrophy or calcification or whatever kind of disappear with with the fusion. I have very nice documented cases in subaxial spine, where by adding fusion, all this anterior decompression just vanishes. A little bit like you would do a C1, C2 fusion for panos from the back. Uh, you know, you see panos going on, disappearing. You, you see the same phenomena in, 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 uh, in subaxial spine, but just by fixating. And uh, you, you're talking about the Google operation, right? Right. Right. I mean, it's 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 we are all friends of Google, <laughs> yeah. and it's not not here with us today. So, <laughs> but um, once again, I, I I think motion is part of the problem. So by abolishing motion with these interfacet uh, devices, you can certainly uh, limit some of this uh, of developing of of the myelopathy. That's for sure. But once again, if you have uh, a reduced canal, I think you need to do something more. Um, it's not very common, but there are some cases with disseminated uh, skeletal hyperostosis, idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, and uh, so then anterior long ligament ossified and PLL ossified. So in those cases, you can you can do just just laminectomy or laminoplasty. What do you think? Yeah, I mean that's I, I said as I said before. I mean, if you if you have an older patient, quite rigid spine, you know, laminectomy alone is enough for for dealing with the myelopathy problem. Okay, thank you a lot for giving the opportunity to discuss that really very nice and new uh, information.